<laughs> um, yeah, I like it. I, I think right now, actually, I, I joke. Uh, I, I'm I'm good with enjoying some some single player games for the moment. Although uh, my my buddy from one of my buddies from college convinced me to get this game that I tried a little bit today, actually, and I don't necessarily love. I'm interested to play it with him because maybe I'll enjoy it more. Um, it's like a World War II hardcore shooter, similar to Enlisted, which I know Josh is interested in when it comes comes to Steam, and I'd yeah, love to try that Enlisted. one. Um, it's Enlisted a, it's is different. World War is, II shooter yeah. that's similar to the one Jake's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly. quite> the <laughs> Hell, Hell Let Loose is the one that I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> which uh, I don't. I, I played like two matches or three matches of it today, and I didn't mind it. But I got it on console because console is crossplay, and my buddy who wanted me to get it is on Xbox. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't like I didn't know. I should have done more research into specifically the performance. But the it specifically the like performance on PS5 is not very good. Like it's very um, inconsistent frame rates, and uh, it makes me a little sad. But it's okay. <laughs> Don't take the bait. Don't rise to it, Cleo. <laughs> we don't need a repeat. Cleo's going to repeat intentionally. Cleo's trying to take that chair down. Look at that. Cleo's going for it. I'm, I am, I'm finding the balance. The equilibrium. <laughs> Can I take my other foot off the ground? Oh. Now, while Cleo's leaning back there, someone play the Seinfeld sound so that Cleo gets surprised. <laughs> 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 oh. Mm. Good stuff. Wait, what time? What time is it? It's seven fifty-one. Do you think I could uh, run upstairs and make some tea real quick? Can you make tea? In I don't minutes? know. Can you? Yeah, I, probably. Google it. Yeah, can, you boil, your kettle? can you boil water? Go make tea in nine minutes. Yeah. Yes, our kettle is very nice. You're very nice. Oh, thank you. Our kettle is my favorite rapper. Uh, <laughs> our kettle, British you know, rapper, of course. I heard. I heard that uh, they're. You know, they've been accused of some crazy. Yeah, stuff. there's some controversy there with <laughs> yeah. our kettle. Yeah, their music gets some people's blood boiling. Our ke- our kettle out here spilling the tea. Mm, yes. Get it, cause he's a <laughs> kettle. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Cleo, shouldn't you be making tea? Yeah, I'm gonna go make tea. <laughs> <laughs> Cleo just brings the kettle down. All right, now and I can't hear the stove. <laughs> All right, speaking of people leaving, I'm gonna grab some water. Okay. What? We don't need a stove. For <laughs> it is, we all pre-planned this, Josh. We were like, what if Josh <laughs> thought we were all going to make it to stream tonight and we even were there at the beginning? And then and we then all, all going to leave in the next yeah. nine minutes. We all said that we were going to do screen, some like, menial task. Me, like, sorry, I can't yeah. make it tonight. I'm feeling sick. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that one time Wash went AFK and he was singing about tacos, but he didn't realize that he was wearing a headset so we could still hear him singing about tacos? No, I don't remember. Maybe that, that was actually. during a Halo stream. He mm. he went okay, and he just starts singing. I got hot sauce in my tacos. Don't be witness in Morocco over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What Did about? you hear the controversial hot mic of of Wash Brunello? He yeah. was singing about tacos. We weren't talking I've about returned. you. Yeah, we definitely weren't talking about you. Perish the thought. I have my headset wired in tonight, so normally Ooh. I leave it on so I can hear you guys talk about me when I leave. Mm. So we can hear you sing about tacos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hear about me witnessing in Morocco. That's right. So what's everyone's least favorite thing about Cleo? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Just, uh, maybe she likes how, tea too much. how cool Where she do I is. Begin? No, of course not, Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Well, I mean, if you technically, if you say least favorite thing, like it could still be a favorite thing. It's, it's just still not a as favorite thing. As the other favorite it's just, things. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're right. 
What's the thing you hate most about Cleo? Oh, there we go. That's the question. <laughs> You're right. I should phrase for clarity here. <laughs> Give me a second. Language is that. important. That's, That's right. right. Language is important. Oh. Hmm. Such a. Such so, Wash, a... you were telling me there's apparently a rumor that we're not going to have any more source books in D&D? Yeah, that's the rumor. It was uh, it was based off of some uh, like Hasbro hiring position that were like put out on their job, like their job listings or something like that. They're looking for uh, somebody who's like in charge of essentially digital book management and some other stuff. Um, it's it's all kind of kind of rumors, but. It's it lines up with all of their previous OGL pushing everything digital stuff that they've been talking about previously and kind of mildly backpedaling on, but now possibly probably not backpedaling on. Now they're forward pedaling again. Mm-hmm. So the the rumor is that there's not gonna be physical source books anymore. You're gonna you have to purchase digital. Yeah, like like the the new books, the what do they call it? The 2024 Players Handbook and Monster Manual and Dungeon Master's Guide are rumored to be like the last physical books um and that and are the they, primary product are, will be envisioned as oh because they also canceled their that like a reoccurring contract or something that they had with uh penguin random house books mm. um but yeah like those are going to be not a primary focus so like digital is going to be the primary to focus use, in books or not does that mean you'll be required to use whatever their one their vtt not VTT, D and D Beyond. That's what I'm trying to say. Does that mean you'll be required to use D and D Beyond to play D and D now? Again, it's like it's just rumors. Like it, that the the printing is either ramping mm. way down or going away, and so the obvious gotcha. like stopgap for that is to focus more on digital. And if that's the case, then yeah, D and D Beyond is like all that you got. Because I don't mind Which... like an interactive PDF or whatever, but I really don't want to be locked into a certain web service like well, that. and also D&D &D Beyond isn't like very flexible or good at the moment so it's it it's really not a great interface take away, um take away you guys just witnessed an assault on stream I did, I did yeah I saw it yeah um so the 20 the like the 2024 players handbook and, and 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 books that you were just referring to wash is that supposed to be the oh, no, one D&D one &D yes stuff okay so they're going to release one like physical versions That's of that assault, the rumor is they're going to release the physical minutes. versions of that but then anything after that is going to be digital right which makes mm. sense because <laughs> like if it's going to be the versionless version that they're going yeah. for then they'll just be like updating or or merging their errata into D, D beyond and expecting people to use a subscription to keep yeah. ac you have access to the latest version mm. That's I I do you guys think that they're actually gonna commit to one D and D being the versionless version because like the the best like yes. comparison to that is like a li modern live service game but D and D was like kind of almost the origin of the modern live service game anyways like that model because D and D would always wait like at least a decade between versions. And just keep providing new and new, like newer and newer content for each version until they kind of start ramping up for the next cycle 10 years later or whatever. And Here's my... I just get the feeling that one D&D is going to like be marketed as if it's like a versionless version. And then in 15 years, 10 years, whatever, was new management's going to come in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> new management's going to come in at Wizards and be like, well, that was dumb. We want to do we want to do sixth edition and then they'll just do it. Yeah, That's I mean, there's guess. always that possibility, but the thing is, is that if if apps and digital interfaces becomes the primary way of interacting with D and D, why have books? Or like, if you have a new version, roll your new version out on the book. And the fact that you could probably lose, and I'm just going to throw out a wacky number, but you could probably lose like 60 percent of your buying customer base, like book wise and then convert the other 40 into five bucks a month and still make more money. Because mm. right gotcha. now it's like a dungeon master will buy one book for 30 bucks <clears throat> and his entire party of seven or whatever. And every subsequent party that plays with him are not paying customers. 
mm. they're all tied in on that single thirty dollar purchase. Well, now you're talking Leon's like Wizards of the Coast. Uh, of yeah, the Coast, exactly. So he's board been member guiding them through this transition. Or, uh, this or a Hasbro <laughs> board member. Wizards of the Coast, I think, pr probably wants to keep their monetization model similar yeah. to what it has been. But I know Hasbro. The rumor is that Hasbro has been pressuring Wizards to monetize yeah. more and more out of D. &D. All the bros pressuring their their companies, like Warner Bros, is doing that. Hasbro <laughs> yeah, is doing that. It's just all the bros. You can't trust the bros. You can't. Not anymore. I wish. Bring back the bros. Bring back the good That's bros. What I'm That's saying. what I said. Bring back the good bros. We we still got some good bros. Make we got bros, Mario bros great again. Speaking yeah. of the speaking of the good bros. Uh, that's actually not a transition at all. I just said it like it was a transition <laughs> into what we're doing tonight, but it's not a transition into what we're doing tonight. Uh, you were all sent a, um, a doc from me earlier today that if you'll now open that up, you'll see has a D6 table of random commoners or NPCs. So tonight we're doing something a little bit different. It's still in universe, um, but we're going to do... Uh, a little bit more of a low-key game. Uh, basically, we've established that like the cut boats away for like at least half a year, maybe longer. I was like, wouldn't it be fun to like peek into the universe and see what was happening a little bit during that time? So we're gonna be pivoting to a totally different place, a little village somewhere, um, and we're gonna play a little bit of a, a little bit of a game. And so throughout the night, you may find yourself needing to become a different villager or townsfolk or whatever. So you can kind of roll for that. And I thought it would be fun if instead of trying to come up with names for ourselves on the fly, we named each other. So like, mm -hmm. you know, Cleo might enter the room and be like, ah, oh, I've rolled a, a grizzled old sailor, you know, and walks into the room and someone else is like, ah, Captain Snowberry, good to see you. And, you know, we just kind of roll with it that way. So anybody has the authority to name anybody else as long as it hasn't been done yet. Um, mm -hmm. So to start with, how about everybody rolls a D6 to figure out which of those characters they're going to be this evening and just kind of share with the group. Mm. I rolled a four. So whatever so the fourth option on that list is, that's what you'll be. Uh, I got a tinker. tinkerer. Ooh, two tinkerers. Mm -hmm. I am a minstrel or a bard. Nice. There you go. Uh, so do you guys want to like name each other too? Like we can just start by naming these ones. I mean, I think it's obvious the Tinker twins, Timmy and Tommy. <laughs> That's good. T Timmy and Tommy Tinker. I'm Tommy. I'm Timmy. Okay. No, I'm Timmy. You're <laughs> oh, Tommy. I'm Tommy. Jake, you said you got a No, minstrel. I'm Tommy. Yes. You're Timmy. You're Timmy. I'm Tommy. Uh, I got it. John Screena. <laughs> John Screena. <laughs> and his name is... <laughs> and you know what? While we're at it, why don't I roll one for me? Yeah. I got, I got a minstrel. So two oh. minstrels, two tinkers. What did Wash get? Walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> we walk into a bard. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the name of our last minstrel? Well, Wash, we're asking you what your class is. Yeah, but I want to know who the last of our four party crew is. Uh, the name of this fourth person. Is. Oh, Wash is running the thing. It's a spicy Ooh. twist. Uh, Josh, your character's name is okay. You named me John Screena, <laughs> sir. Your uh, hmm, Dave Barista. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. good. Very good. Timmy and Tommy, you are both on the eastern gate of the uh, the humble town of Feather something. Featherbrook. The gate of the city is sturdy, thick wood and stone. And on either side of it, there are these two little watchtowers. The gates swing open in between them. And you're on... You're on the right side. You two have been assigned guard duty tonight. And John and Dave, you're on, on the left side. Um, I've got there's my, been... my guitar out. I'm just like strumming a little tune for everybody while we're out here. Nice. What are I you guys am... doing on this uh, on this calm, dark night? The, 
there's the smell of rain in the air, although it probably hasn't reached yet. Something off in the distance. On the road e, again. that's not how you do that, all right? T, like, listen, you got to put the layers of glasses just right, and then it will magnify. What? Look, you're I, placing I them too it. close together. No, you got to move them a little further the, apart. The light goes through them. What does it matter how close no, together they are? Because they're, they're, they're curved a little bit. I sanded them down a little bit. Why do they need to be curved? Because well, it's supposed to be a magnifying. Here, get, 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 give me that. No, it's mine. <laughs> John. You hear Timmy and Tommy bickering over there like they always do. They're not very often do they take this seriously, but... But you and Dave, you know, you're you're keeping an eye out. You know, Dave's kind of keeping everything chill. There's been some panic. There's been some some rumors on the breeze of uh, you know, other cities falling and being taken over, and and rumors of places going missing. Not people, but places. And so your your eyes are are kind of locked to the to the horizon and the the surrounding area, and uh, it starts to it starts to rain. You've got a little bell in your tower that uh, that you're sorry, not a bell, a horn, a little warning horn. Uh, for if you spot anything, there's a little fire crackling next to you to. Uh, you know, to shine light out from behind you. What's going through your mind in this moment, John? Uh, John is thinking about how he did forget his um, little box that he often uses as a percussive instrument when uh, Dave plays his guitar. And he's kind of uh, thinking about how, like, well, all right. Well, next time I gotta remember to bring that. The stool is not very is not isn't even as comfortable as sitting on that and playing that anyways. Um but he's also just somewhat also glad that he forgot it because he knows that he wouldn't really be concentrating on looking out on the horizon and being the person that is a little bit more concentrated on the job at hand because yeah, it is scary, kind of what's been going on right now and the rumors that have been flying. And um, especially on a night like this, you never know what could happen. Yeah. And as you're gazing off, um, the Featherbrook itself, the little river that comes from the mountains to the east and that winds its way through your little town, continues out the other way to the, to the east, it starts to shimmer a little in the moonlight. And as you're thinking about your drum and going through the beat of the the song that you hear, you hear this stomping in the distance. Hey, is that, is that, is that you, John? Did you? Are you doing that? Uh, no, that is not me. And John will will try to get Why a better are you look at the, the the whole telescope thing. And... Oh, you're shaking it. I'm not doing can I roll it. I will perception and see if I can figure out what is causing the shaking. Like, see if I can spot something sure. happening. Also, just a side note out of character. I want to say that sound effect is creepy. <laughs> oh, a nineteen. Yeah, I have <clears throat> the, certainly not a mimic muted. All right, it's back. You hear the roaring, and you hear the impacts of the feet of something truly colossal. Um, you catch only the outline of it. It's quite tall. It stands head and shoulders over the trees. Um, you see these long, pointed, dagger-like legs. Just, just... There's maybe eight or ten of them on either side, and it's just kind of lumber and you see the trees swaying as it's breaking its way through the woods it seems to be following the river which means it's heading towards you with a twing i like break a guitar string as i kind of see this shape out in the distance like dave, dave there's something there's something coming right now i'm i'm john you're dave um, yeah that you're right john. what what, what can you tell what it is I, no, it's some big, like, 
It looks like a big monster thing. It's got what these big spikes What are you two going on, on over there? We're trying look to focus. Out. No, no, no. Look, this is not a right. game. Look out there. There's a silhouette out there. Oh, use Can use your telescope, T. Flash. Yes, you can. Okay, I believe uh, you. I, I, <laughs> what was? I've never heard anything like that. Have, that um, is a sixteen oh plus zero. So sixteen, 16. plus zero. <clears throat> which of which the of camera. us has one tonight? Uh, that's Both me. of you have one. I should, in your, I, yep, it's I like will, I, uh, up in your tower. Yep, I'm and, gonna do that. Yeah, we should we should do that. Timmy, we the camera is behind your head, and it's it's out showing this creature in the distance. The head turns towards you, and you see the light, like almost like a cat, reflecting off of its eyes, and it starts rushing towards you. Does anyone have any, do we have any arrows? Is there a boat? Yeah. I look at the, I, does it look like it's stopping or slowing, or is it like gonna bulldoze through the gate right now? It is going to bulldoze through the gate in one round. It is clearing a massive amount of distance. I would like you guys to roll initiative real quick. Ooh. I'm sorry, I put myself in the headspace and with this sound effects, like imagining this thing charging at me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a little- I'm little, right there with you. A little freaked out. Yeah. Uh, okay. John has a 19. Nice. Uh, Dave got a 10. Not so nice. Timmy got a three. That's even less nice. Uh, the other T twin got a 15. That's nicer. All right. You are going to get one round because this thing rolled a two. Aha. Um, How high yeah. up is the wall? Oh, sorry, it's your turn. Go ahead. I was say, assuming John is first yeah, John's in initiative up first. order, um, does it look like it's going to clip the like if it's going if it's going to ram through the gate? Does it look like it's going to clip either of our towers? Like we're we're in danger possibly with how big it is. Like from um, getting, it looks like down. it'll probably crash straight through the middle. Like it looks like it's going straight towards the middle. Um, okay. The way that the gate is is built. Um, the two seams of either side of the doors, they swing open, like they swing into the town. Mm -hmm. And where the two seams touch, there is, that's where the, the, the river kind of cuts through. As the gate opens, there's like two pathways on either side, and you can see it is clambering straight down the river into the town. Okay, so well, I guess what I'm asking, it's not broad enough that it's going to hit either of our towers, do I think? Hard to tell at this different distance. I mean, if it's okay. going down the middle, maybe. If it, you know, eases to one side or not, it might clip one or the other. Okay. We gotta take uh, out its legs or something. Uh, are you sure about that? And um, <laughs> John is going to draw his short bow and uh, try to, yeah, do that. Um, and then, so yeah, he's gonna attack, aiming specifically for a leg on this thing. Okay. Go ahead and make um, your attack. Ooh, natural one. Oh, no. You draw the bow back, and the nerves are starting to get to you, and you let the arrow fly way too soon. And as it's it's sending off, you, you know, you're you're watching almost down the sights of a gun, but down the sights of your bow as the arrow flies off. This thing is very, very large. And in the dark, it's almost hard to to tell the size of it. Uh, Tommy, what are you doing in this moment? John is going to spend his move action um, getting as far down the stairs of the tower as well. Like, he's trying to get out okay. of the tower. So you're going to, like, fire a man down the, down the ladder on the back? Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. Um, this is... Oof. I'm going to cast a uh, firebolt at it. Okay. Um, you pull out your cipher of firebolt. Yeah. And man, these attack rolls are not going great. <laughs> uh, I, I got a four. 
a four. Again, everybody seems to be lobbing attacks at this thing, and it's they're they're, they're going wide or they're way too early. Panic is starting to set in. Dave. Okay, um, I'm going to look briefly at my my guitar, my priceless minstrel heirloom that I've had with me for who knows how long, and I'm gonna set it down on the tower. I'm like, I guess, I guess duty calls. I'm gonna step up with my cipher of dancing lights, and what I would like to do is create a little string of lights and then move them in such a way that hopefully the creature will not run into either of our towers. So I don't know that I, I can steer it away from the town. Like I assume we're at the center of like a village wall or whatever. But you are. if I could just get it off center enough that it misses the towers so that we have a chance to try and like attack back, um, then I think that would be a success for me. So I don't know if there's a certain role you want me to use for that or whatever. The, the cipher just says as a bonus action, you can move the lights up to 60 feet. So I, you know, mm. I would try and send mm. it 60 feet wide of us. Okay. Um, make a deception check. Okay. Hmm. That deception check is a 13. All right. You send the lights out in the direction that you want to try to uh, guide it, almost like a plane down a runway, mm -hmm. just edging it to, to one side. <clears throat> Were you going to the left or the right? Uh, whichever side is away from my tower. I'm noble, but okay. I'm not that noble. <laughs> you're on the left side, so you're okay. sending it to the right then? Yeah, I'm trying okay. to get it past the tower, but I'm okay. like, I'm not willing to yeah. risk edging it into my tower to try no and do that. All right. Um, unfortunately... You should really get down. I'm going to yell over to them. You should get down from your tower. I'm going to try and send it off somewhere. All right. What? Well, unfortunately, it is now its turn. It does what not seem swayed turn? by the lights. Oh, no. Um, oh, wait. Did Trevor no. get worse than a two? On his I'm sorry. Path? Yeah, I thought you already went, Trevor. That's my bad. No, it's your turn. You get cool music. <laughs> um, how, how high is this tower? Um, it's about 20 feet up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to cast a fire bolt at it and then may start, uh, use all my movement to come down. Okay. Do your fire bolt. Fire bolt. Uh, Lightning that is a natural 20. A natural 20. Nice. This thing is right up on you guys now. And Timmy, in this last moment, you cast the firebolt at it and it sears across its face. Uh, go ahead and tell me your damage. Do you double the dice or double the damage? Uh, double dice. I say, I think okay. we've been doing double dice. That is going to be 13 damage, fire damage. 13. As it's now kind of being lit up by the fireball, this thing looks like a combination between a uh, like a praying mantis and a, and a centipede and like a, a bulbous worm, like a cat or like a spiky caterpillar, like all of these amalgamations. Um, it has an impossible number of these big spike legs, and as you see it now in the in the light of your firebolt, they're like sinking in two feet into the ground under the weight of this thing. And as the the firebolt like cuts through its face, the blubbery flesh that's underneath the carapace kind of like split, spills out, and there are like more eyes inside of it, and they're like shining red and focusing at you now. Um, See, brother, that's how you hit him. Now's not the time to brag! <laughs> and I'm going to uh, use all my movements to start heading down. Okay. Um, I need you to make those who were on the ladder going down, I need you to make dexterity saving throws. Okay. I believe in the tower. I'm sticking with it. I'm on the tower, yeah. I look across and down. lock eyes with you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like just the two of us. Nine. 
just the uh, two of us. I also got we a nine. Can okay, make and then those of you on top, I need you to make a strength saving throw. Of us. Oh. I <laughs> hope we don't die. Strength saving throw. Luckily, my strength Ooh. is a plus zero. Mm, yeah, that's good. Same. <laughs> that's going to be an 11. Mine's an 11. A nine. Okay. Um, those of you who were on the ladders or going down, as this creature smashes into the gate, it turns sideways. And a big, long, wide, almost like a, like a bus turning sideways and smashing into a, a building, takes out the gate and both towers just fall over. Oh. And you take 38 points of damage. I'm dead. I'm dead. No, wait, I'm not dead. I'm just almost dead. <laughs> oh, no. How much Mostly damage? dead. Yeah. Those of you who are on the ladders. Oh, oh, shoot. As the towers fall on top of you, take 38 points of damage. Those of you who are on top can take half of 38 as you're flung from it and land to the ground. Oh, well, that's nice. I am dead. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead, dead. I, like, I am also, also dead, dead. dead. Wait, 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 wait. No, wait. Let me do the math. Dead. Yeah, I'm dead. John is alive. His first attack. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it is now going to... Oh, I think you down and no, bites you a twenty-seven. I presume hits on who? You, Dave. Or oh, sorry, uh, Dave. You're John. So I'm, I'm Dave. John. Dear Dave I'm and Dave. John. Dave, you take twenty-eight points of piercing damage as it bites you. Okay. And for its final attack to John, a twenty-six. I'm dead. A 26 um, hits, yes. And you take 31 points of fighting <laughs> yeah, damage. John is also dead. John, mm. as John pierces you. Yeah. you as as John feet. dies, right before he dies, he's like on this ladder, and you see that he started to pull a cipher of the spell sleep out of his pocket, like that was going to be the next thing he was going to try. And he's like, yes, I have this great idea. This is going to work. And then he just gets immediately <laughs> killed. <laughs> yeah. So as, as the, the leg pierces through John, we see the cipher of sleep, a little ball um, that separates in the middle to like sh emit like the, the spelly sleep gas. We see it fly out of his hand, tink, 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 rolls uh, across the, the cobblestone ground as of the feet of soldiers and the rest of the militia are rushing past. There's fighting and swords and spears and bows f flying at this thing and it's killing them one by one by one and they're falling and they're falling and you know what that means <laughs> that means it's story time at the wing badger tavern we'll be right back what Samir. And that's God the end of the adventure. Us. It's all over. That's it. <laughs> Alara. Long ago, the four ancients created a world in harmony. Then, everything changed when the chat ebbed magic. Only Kelnor, master of good vibes, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. Two years have passed, and four adventurers have discovered a conspiracy, a company selling magic. And although their roleplay is great, they have a lot of XP to earn before they're ready to save anyone. But I believe they can save the world. Welcome back to the Wing Badger Tavern, where friends tell stories. I am joined by some of my friends. I would like you to introduce yourselves. And uh, I need you guys to roll up a new character, because that's going to be a theme for tonight. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Hi, I am Jake, and I play a thug. Back to you, Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> As introduced, I am Cleo, and I play a tribal warrior. <laughs> Ooh. Hello. Back to I, you. I guess. <laughs> Hello, 
I am Trevor. I will be playing a medic. <laughs> Hi, we'll I'm Josh. One. I'm just a player. I'll be playing a tribal warrior. <laughs> and tribal I'm Wash. Warriors Unite. Your wing badger game master, and I will be playing the skittering horror and Ooh. everything else that comes with it. So, guess where we are now? We are in a quaint little tavern. A quaint little tavern with every piece of furniture pressed up against the front door. Um, the rest of the town, including you, are, are sheltering yourself in this tavern. Every able-bodied person has already been sent out. Um, like that's part of the militia. The women and children are being ushered downstairs into the into the uh, the stone basement, and you hear screams and crashing, and all sorts of horrendous things happening outside. It's up to you. It's up Luke, to you. Luke, my brother in arms, help me move this table. Get it into place. Absolutely, chimney. And I'm going to grab the <laughs> table and help push it into place. Let's move it this way. Oh, uh, yes. Get yes. your shoulder under it and one, two, heave. <laughs> I will shove a table against the wall oh. to help barricade. Is there a window or anything where I can try and, like, see how the militia is doing? There are. There, okay. There's some debris in front of it, like some some tables and stuff, but you can push it through enough to, to see what's going on. So I'm kind of, like, leaned weirdly over stuff, maybe. I'm like, it doesn't look good out there, Jimmy. Uh, what do I see? You see um, lots of chaos. The, the rain has started to pick up. The ground is slick. But um, there are some dancing lights that are casting some shadows um, down the, the town square. Uh, you see a rather large uh, creature that we've previously described, but you're seeing it for the first time. And it almost makes you wet your pants. You can roll for pants wetting if you'd like. Um, <laughs> but as you... I don't think as there's any rolling involved. <laughs> uh, constitution saving throw um but as you're as you're gazing out here to begin with uh you see one. <laughs> the lightning <laughs> and thunder crack through the sky lighting it up and there's one of these large spike legs piercing like it's got like two or three of the last militia on it and it slings them off on the ground and just starts plodding through the uh plotting through the town there doesn't look like there's any more militia but you see the bodies of them and their gear all across the floor it looks like like now that you have permanently evacuated evacuated your bowels the the thought comes to you and washes through your whole body it's up to you Luke, I'm what do you what do you see out there? Hold hold yourself together. I slowly turn from the window. My eyes are like bright, like big, wide, like dinner plate size, you know. And I look back. And I'm like, the militia, they're, they're all dead. Uh, uh, I think all, all of them. them. I'm gonna look over at the unsavory kind of like ruffian in the corner. Gurf, can you see behind the bar? Is there any alcohol left? Maybe we can try and burn it. Well, I never thought I'd be helping the militia. But here we are. This and is not. Gurf will go go and look <laughs> Put for the alcohol. Put your squabbles aside, man. <laughs> I'm doing that's the, the, the me saying that was supposed to like preface the fact that I'm putting my petty squabbles aside. Oh my god! I'm not really alcohol. a words guy. I'm a, I'm a action guy. But, Does anyone have any cloth? Balin, Balin, you you have some some materials for for healing? Yes. Yes. Well, maybe we can. Maybe one of them's still alive. I, I'm gonna look back out the window. It, it, I just want to check: is it coming towards our tavern right now, where we like need to be rolling out of the way, or is it kind of just generally out there? You know, um, it is going to cross your path again. The river runs through the town. You're currently in the tavern. Um, across the street from the tavern is the the general store. That's what you can see immediately. Um, okay. but, and, and like behind you is the, a bit more of residence before you get to the walls. Okay. I'm going to look back at Gurf. You said you need cloth. Yes. I, to make these into improvised, uh, I don't know if they're not explosives. The general um, store would probably have some. I could, I, I could run over there. Oh, I have you, some. Ooh, well then that's a great start. That's Here better. you go, Balin. 
Uh, all right, look, Luke, you hold here. I'll go check it out. Only one of us should leave at a time. Chimney, I don't think it's safe for just one of us to... You can't see this thing. It's gigantic. What, I'll go what, with what you. What is it? Uh, if, you, if you say so, okay. Chimney, I, I believe in you. Okay. Remember, there's trust each other. I hold out my hand for like the forearm anime clasp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we must believe in each other. Now, quick, I think we didn't barricade this one window. Well, don't we need something to go out of? Well, I'm going uh, going out the window. <laughs> yeah, that we can, I think, I can we all make it through I a window? I you wanted me to barricade that window. Oh, yeah, no, okay. No. <laughs> No, I'm going out the one window we haven't I'm barricaded. I'm right behind you. I'm right behind you. No words uh, on I, your I, as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, Luke. I'm Chimney. Names aren't my best. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. What's my name? Is I, am I Dearth? What's Gerf. my name? Gurf. Gurf. <laughs> Gurf. <laughs> yep, that's me. All right, let's do this. <laughs> why, why are you going out there? Uh, so we can kill the thing. Here. Like, it, we, I hand everyone a bottle of alcohol with a cloth. Uh, Wait, like let's take thing. this with us. I'm gonna find. I'm assuming that it's a tavern. It's got like big barrels that like apples or whatever oh, yeah. could be in. Let's apples, roll one of these out there so we can crouch behind it and you know assess the situation before we you run out into the open words, and die right you're, away. You're a, a genius, Luke. I, Thanks, if Jimmy. If the militia can't do it, why can we? Uh, because we have to. <laughs> all, right, all right, we don't know if it has things with it, right? You said there's a large monstrosity out there. It's just maybe, this maybe big it has worm-looking thing. Maybe it has other things with it. We got to be careful. That's true. I've heard worms travel in packs. I, I think we should just just go to the the city and and have them deal with it. What city? The closest city is what's the, what's the closest city? <laughs> uh, the closest city is probably Gaim, which is to the east, which is the direction that it's coming from, and it's a good ways away. It's like miles. I I we last heard from it from. Our brothers in arms that it was under siege. What, what, what are they gonna do? Yeah, what help is gonna come from Gaim? By the time that Gaim would get here, all of the people that I used to intimidate and lie about to get money <laughs> are gonna be gone. We need to but, save those people so I can keep getting money from them. I don't, I don't understand. I don't agree with you on like a fundamental moral level, but I agree with you on like the actions we need to take right now. Wait, I just think we should find some. Let's just go Let's for the go. general. I'm gonna door. heave the huge barrel out the window, and then I'll just leap out behind it. And I, I push it Smash. into place. The barrel goes <laughs> through the window. <laughs> I follow. Can it. I catch I, the I follow it out? Yeah, crouch behind it. As, hey, I, right. as I was going out the window, can I catch it on the other side after it smashed through the window? <laughs> I am just like right yeah, up sure. against whoever the last one out of the the window was before me. It'll be uh, uh, me, Dur Durf, Durf, G E R F, Gurf, Gurf, <laughs> like Garfield, Gurf. Okay, he's your girlfriend. Careful, the broken glass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, you. I don't like your girlfriend. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> Gurf. Yeah, Gurf is right in front of. Uh, what? Do you, what's your name? What's your name, medic? Uh, oh, healer. Balin. 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 I know you're scary, drinking but try to remember your own name. <laughs> yeah, the drinking yeah. contest. Don't you remember? You were drinking up under the table, almost impossibly for your frame. I wasn't sure how you were doing that. And I... as this back and forth is going on, you're like <laughs> wheeling the barrel out across the road, like kind of huddling behind it. It's one of the larger ones that they were using, uh, tipped up on its side as like a like a table. Um, so it's got a, it's got a, lot of, it's big and wide and round, but kind of squat. So as you, as you set it up on its side, you can kind of crouch and a couple of you can get behind it. Unfortunately, Balin, since you said you went out last, uh, you're kind of like, like, as we see the, the barrel rolling across the, the cobblestone road, you're kind of like tagging behind out the back because there isn't enough room for all three of you, just or all four of you, just the three of you. Um, <laughs> But uh, Balin, you do notice on the on the ground, um, rolling towards you, is a little a little cipher ball. I'm gonna pick up the cipher ball. You have a little cipher ball. What is? Do I know what it does? Looks like a cipher of sleep. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Familiar. Mm. <laughs> 
How how uh, fortunate for me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to look over at Chimney right. and be like, where exactly were we going again? We're just like wheeling I, the well, barrel across the street. Uh, let me, I haven't, I haven't looked where we're going. Let me look. The gods. That's what we're up against. I think I said we, it was we should just, just, just hide guys. All right, all right. No, just hide. Or something. If we hide, it will kill everyone. I don't no. know about you, but I have a family here. No Luke, more people do to intimidate and lie and steal from. <laughs> we can do this, Luke. We just gotta take out its legs. We we don't All know right. if it's not flammable yet. We gotta Are try. You heading, I'm gonna. Look Are you over heading to you? the general store? What's up? No, I think we got. I think we're fine without the general store. Okay. I think we're gonna find an advantageous position. And is, are there any torches lit in the in the in the street area? Um, so all of the lights in this area, unfortunately, have been upgraded to hotlines. So they they almost oh. look like gas lamps. Oh, okay. Um, um, uh, Gurf is going to uh, try to crack the glass of one of the gas lamps and then light his Molotov. <laughs> <laughs> using the gas lamp and then do, basically do a test lob at one of the legs of the creature to see right. if it's flammable. Wait, before, Make a before you check. throw that, I'm going to take the tip of my spear and hold it into the fire so that the end of my spear starts burning. Nice. nice. Make a stealth check. A stealth check. Unless you're trying not to be noticed when you do this. I am trying not to be noticed by the skittering horror, so that makes sense. Um... Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, it does not appear to turn towards you, although it does have eyes protruding out of very odd and random places. You can see parts on some of its legs. Um, <clears throat> not the not the like the lower half of it that are pretty much like all spike and blade, um, but like the upper portions, you can see places where it has been cut by uh, various spears and swords from the militia that are now protruding with almost wound like eyes oh weird well uh gurf is gonna aim for some of the wound like eyes for his his maltov toss i'm not okay but can i make a survival check to try and identify if the piercing weapons did any damage like to see like do i think my spear is useless looking at what these other weapons have done uh sure go ahead i got a 12 a 12 um, for all intents and, purp and purposes, it looks like it has been damaging it. It just, it, it almost feels like this creature responds differently to damage. Something, there's something weird. Like you, like you see around the wounds on it, you see some sort of liquid that may be blood. It's kind of gelatinous. That's kind of like coming out of it. It's Ooh. just that inside is this fish-like egg collection of eyes that are underneath the surface okay. that are kind of like starting to protrude out whenever there is a wound. Well, right. that's horrifying. Good and good idea, Luke. I'll, I'll light my spear, too. Can I uh, use the sleep cipher on the creature? Um, sure. Is that... I think it makes a save, right? I believe you are correct. Let me look up sleep real quick. So you're going to toss it at it mm -hmm. uh, to get it within range. Actually, it looks like, uh, yeah, you'll toss it at it. Uh, but you don't need to make a check for that because it's part of how the cipher works. And you need to roll 5d8 and tell me the total of that. Okay. After the sleep potion... Well, I guess we'll see what how the sleep toss goes. Sleep toss. That is 20. 20. All right. So essentially, you have discovered that this sleep cipher will cause 20 hit points worth of creatures to fall asleep. Um, mm. Since this creature's hit points is well over 20 at the moment, uh, yes. is, it isn't enough to put it unconscious. Mm. Uh, fortunately, there was one militia person that was on the ground underneath it, barely conscious and struggling in pain and about to die. And you put him out of, like to sleep before he succumbed to his wounds. So even in all of this, you feel like at least you helped give some peace right. to this poor soul. Luke, now remember what, what we were taught 
Right. We'll have a much greater time if we can surround our enemy. I suggest we get up close without it noticing, and we hit it from underneath with our flame spears. I don't know if we can get up close without it noticing, but I think we should get up in close and hit it with our spears. Fire in the <laughs> hole! And Gurf is throwing his Molotov. Ooh, wait, let's have Gurf's cover, Gurf's Molotov be our cover. We can dash around the side while he throws the next- It's mid-throw, I'm throwing Ooh. it now! Uh, action economy <laughs> puts us all in turn order, we can move while you throw. <laughs> I'll give you my Molotov! Brother, I've been reading throwing. a book called The, right, the Usage of the Action Economy. I think that we can- <laughs> Jake, do your range attack. You, brother. Um, so okay. the way that the that the uh, <laughs> initiative has worked out is everybody has rolled much, much higher than this creature. So I'm just going to let you guys go in order, like the way we used to do old school back in the day. Um, mm. and, cool. uh, and then once all of you have done your action and move, feel free to coordinate. And then it will be the monster's turn. So, oh, so like team uh, initiative, basically? Yeah, yeah. Cool. 19 to hit on the Molotov. 19 hits? Nice. While I found a homebrew Maltov that does one d10 fire damage. Does that sound appropriate? Sure. That sounds okay. That sounds peachy keen. Cool. While the Molotov is being thrown, and as it hits, I'm going to use my dash. No, I'm not going to use the dash. I'm just going to run because I need to attack as well. But I'm going to go, um, like out of my way, basically, to not be on the same trajectory as the Molotov, so that hopefully sure. it will look where that came from, see a big upturned barrel. And then I can come in from the side and attack one of the... I follow my brother in arms. And I'm going to attack one of the eyes on the leg. Okay. Um, and just to see if that's like a weak point. And sure. as a tribal warrior, I have an ability called Pack Tactics that says I have advantage on an attack roll if at least one of my allies is within five feet nice. of the creature. So as long as um, uh, Chimney is with me, I'm going to attack I got with your advantage. back, Luke. So, and all right. The thug Luke also has pack tactics too. Uh, six fire damage, also. Six fire damage. Luke and Chimney, go ahead and roll your attacks. Take hey, this, you foul beast! You monster! I rolled a 17 to hit with my burning spear. 17 hits. What I rolled you, also a 17. What would you add for the fire damage? Like, because I just have the normal spear damage here. Um, this will be a one-off thing because it's just the residual heat from it being in fire. Uh, just add 1d4. Got it. All right. Well, I rolled a 1 on the d4, and I rolled a 2 on the d6, plus Solid. 1 is a total of 4 points of damage from my Everybody, spear. But I'm going to jam got it this. into that eyeball as hard as I can. i got to find my d8. Brother, He's don't waste my your hands. moments. This is our time to attack. It hasn't I'm... looked at us yet. Don't freeze up now. Done. Remember our uh, tactics. I'm gonna make damage. We fight <laughs> as a pack. <laughs> yeah. Eight damage. It was a 17 to hit. So no, 17 hits. Away. You hit it so much harder than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you're going to get from this that 17 is its armor class. It barely pierces through. It, it almost cuts since you're aiming for the previous cut. You see it glide across the uh, the plate carapace and into the wound. And as you shove it, it goes all the way through. Um, it pops some of the eyes into this goop stuff. And as it like breaks the wound open a bit more, more eyes are just like... Doo -doo 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 like bubbling out of it almost. Ooh, I'm gonna no, hold my spear in there. Yeah, I'll do the same. All right, so you both have like attacked at the same spot. So you've almost got like like tweezers Riot! and chopsticks into this thing. Um, hold, brother! Hold! All right, we have, I believe, Trevor, your character still has a turn. Balin! Um. Balin. Probably gonna cast resistance on Kirk. Uh, All right. Thank what you. does that do? That gives you like resistance to piercing, bludgeoning, and slashing Let me, damage. Let me pull it up. All right, and it's going to go ahead and take chat. its turn. It is understood that whatever spells these random NPC stat blocks have, they, we just have ciphers that do those. <laughs> the target yes. can roll a d4 and add the number rolled to one saving throw of its choice. It can roll the die before or after making the saving throw. Okay, and good oh. on you. Um, 
Let's see, this I, thing is are, going to... Are you to... injured? Do you need anything else? Gurf? Uh, no, I'm good. I haven't been touched by it yet, although I'm sure it's gonna hate me now. <laughs> <laughs> All I'm right. sorry, I'm just imagining the movie scene where he's like, I'm sure it's gonna hate me now, and immediately a spike it's just runs on him. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it looks towards you, and, like, and opens its mouth and roars at you, and there are almost like these gills on the side of it that flail open, and they flip forward and reverse, and there's, there's like these these other little eyes inside of it, like with this piercing red glow. Um, your eyes dilate down to pinpoints as it uses its maddening presence on you. Um, you're looking in the face of madness. Uh, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Aha, and I get to add a d4 to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one well. One equals two. <laughs> I say four plus three equals seven, so. <laughs> seven. Um, you are paralyzed until the end of your next turn. Okay, so I don't get to go the next group turn. Yes. It is going to attack. Ooh, it rolled a one as it tries to lift up the 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 leg that is currently spliced by these two spears it lifts you guys up off the ground but with your combined weight you pull it back and spread Hold! apart and it it almost like that you see the the end of the spike like stutter against the stone as you're like pulling it into place um it is going to go with its bite attack Ooh, it only rolled a Let's see here da -da -da -da. it rolled a 14 to hit you two that are holding on, like one of you. I'm going to say Luke. 14 to hit. Brother, no! No! And it, yeah, it definitely hits me. Okay. I have a 12, AC. <laughs> um, as it goes down to bite you, you take 30 points of piercing damage. <laughs> That's more than double my HP. I'm dead. <clears throat> And I just so uh, there's just a tiny like end of the spear sticking out of where I was. Oh, I'm otherwise no. fully Brother gone. In arms! No! <laughs> Luke. So chimney, you uh, you see Luke just get snatched up, and he, it kind of does the thing where it's like as it like swallows him down, and you see no! like the teeth like curl out and like almost pull him in like fingers. Ugh. You um, die for that, you beast! It is now the town's turn. Ooh. Um, Come on, town. The town. Put in some work. Listen to them. They sound <laughs> like they're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> um, they are going... To, you see a, a whole bunch of townsfolk now have poured out of the... Uh, um, out of the window that you guys busted through. And they are bringing clubs and, uh, like, broken table legs. A couple of them pick up swords off of the ground dropped by militia. And they are going to do... Da, 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 da. They're going to bludgeon it for... Oh, wow. 15 points of damage. Nice. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Somewhere among those um, townsfolk who have run out is a small gnome apothecary. I, I rolled a medic as my next one. So nice. a little gnome apothecary runs out, and that'll be me next. Um, and then it is back to the top. It is now your guys' turn. Uh, I want to go before uh, Girth and cast um, Lesser Restoration to end the par paralysis. Okay. Oh, Nice. I'm going to notice the the one tribal warrior who's like sticking out of the the side of uh, of the monster, and I'm just gonna run over there uh, and try. I have a couple spells here. Sorry, I have to look up what they are. They didn't. They weren't my spells two minutes ago. <laughs> if, if it isn't the cowardly timid the timid gnome sweep coming in to save the day, <laughs> sweep <laughs> chimney and sweep. Uh, okay, I'm going to <laughs> use my cipher of aid. Uh, up here with, with you and that uh, bolsters your toughness and resolve um, I can choose up to three creatures so I'll do you and the other the two others that I can see like over by the barrel um, yep. and your hit point maximum and current hit points increase by five 
Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it lasts eight hours, and I'm sure we'll all be dead by then. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you can just assume it's indefinite. Um, but I'm gonna. He's a very oh, pessimistic sweet. gnome. I'm gonna. I do thought that. you would have run. I've got you. And I, I thought you. And I'm gonna like pat you on the back with the with the cipher. Like that's how I activate it, you know. And it kind of like uh, this little pulse of energy kind of swoops out of it and kind of you know skitters across your body. Um, Together we might just avenge Luke. And then. I, I have no idea how much of my move that was. Do I have enough move to run away, or should I stay at the leg? Uh, you do have room to, to move away. Okay, I'm going to run away to whatever the nearest cover is. So either the barrel, or if there's something closer I can duck behind or under, I'll go there. So your options are the barrel, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. You could run back to the uh, the tavern. Back to the tavern. <laughs> you could. Uh, the the uh, general store on the other side has an, an awning, almost like in a western town where like the wood steps go up a little bit and there's mm -hmm. an awning and some poles. You could kind of tuck back in there. And then further in town, um, there is a stable and an inn I'm that you could probably start the, working towards, but you would I'm still the, be in the road. I'm going to run to the general store. Can I make it inside the store? Just barely. Like you'll okay. make it, you'll like... One essentially the slam door. the door shut and you're like uh, uh, yeah uh. i'm gonna but do that it's gonna take an attack of opportunity <sighs> of course it is and that is a 22 to hit that's gonna hit and we'll see oh. if it Sweep! rolls Be low careful! it rolled low I'm not out of uh tw 20 points of damage piercing damage I had 19 hit points. <laughs> Sweet. Just, I, I run out, I try my best to help, and I'm like, I'm not out of and I immediately die. <laughs> Dead again. Um, so essentially, a sweep runs across. Just wait till next turn, I can get you back up. As no, one there's... of the legs smashes into sweep and like folds him in half and slams him into the, uh, into the general store door. And from inside the general store, we see sweep smash up against the wall and half of the window. Who is the character that's looking out the window? Uh, give me a second. I'll figure it out. Um, there is a, um, like a sort of dirty, unshaven, vagabond looking thug uh, inside who's been like, I, it's not, not, you know, they're not, I don't know. I don't care about this town. I'm not fighting for them. Um, and you like I'm now eating a little bit while he's in there? And, yeah. I'm now gazing into the eyes of this gnome that has like splatted up against the against the window here my you know sharp elven ears looking at looking back at it and like I, i'm starting to face the fact that like it's coming this way you know <laughs> like I, I guess i'm gonna have to fight this thing eventually uh as after sweep sorry go ahead that was it that was the statement okay cool <sighs> uh so after as sweep gets swept away uh as it as it were <laughs> Um, Gurf is going Swept. to uh, take aim with his heavy crossbow and shoot at the um, at the creature. Uh, that's a nine. I assume that doesn't hit. Nine to hit. Nine does not yeah. hit. Um, so then uh, Gurf is going to fall back a little bit. He's gonna try to like fall back to the porch of the the general store. I'm gonna okay. I'm so gonna kick open the Gurf. door for you and just be like Gurf and I'll. I'll follow because I didn't use my movement. I just used my action, so I will stick by his side. Okay, Gurf, as you fire your crossbow at it, um, you see the crossbow glance past it. Um, the the head moves out of the way, but you hear a, something. There's like a crack, and its head smashes to the side. It wasn't your crossbow, but it was something else. Um, oh, do we know? Uh, can I roll perception to find like where like where that sound came from? Sure. Or, okay. Um, Chimney is going to um, take advantage of the fact this spear is still inside of it, mm -hmm. and noticing that it's just squishy on the inside, mm -hmm. has decided to just dig his spear deeper. Okay. In into this cavity. Okay. I don't know what you want me to roll for that. Uh, make an attack. With your spear, okay. Gurf got an eleven on the on the um, perception. Um, so you saw a little bit of a metallic-looking spark as some as a projectile or something 
hit the the carapace on its head and impacted it enough to like knock it off balance a little bit and mm. to the side. Uh, but I mean, it, it came from the right, so that would be like from the north somewhere. But mm. you know, that's like like the general stores there. So it had to. Well, have that's been where some... I, I'm headed to the general store. So yep. yeah, I but it, it would have came from abo- above it or over above. it or something. Over. Because okay. this thing's standing tall. Like you shot up at its head and something from the side. Um. Uh, if I, I rolled a uh, eleven, sorry, twelve, to attack, obviously that doesn't do much. I did. I did. I say to do it with advantage because you can do it with oh. advantage because of the way that you have like the spear in there already. It's like grappling it, maybe. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, did I say twelve? I meant thirteen. <laughs> thirteen. Okay. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, not enough to do any damage, but it does make it angry, and it is now acutely aware okay. of your presence. It's I'm angry. going to um, leave the spear in there, and then I'm going to grapple the leg and try to get like on the inside of the leg, right? Try to be a nuisance where it can't get me. Now, these are like very long, very thin centipede-like legs. So you can like wrap your arms around them very easily, but like hugging the eyes. But but there's nothing that you're gonna be be able to hide behind. It's it's about like as thick as like a telephone pole. I'm just hoping that that it's having mobility issues reaching me if I'm. (laughs) It's not flexible. It also does have like 15 of these. Yeah. No. I'm okay. I'm cool. I listen. I'm Chimney. I'm not Luke. (laughs) Okay. Ah, Luke, rip that guy. Uh, I would I'm, like I'm to gonna... go ahead. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna hold on to it. If that's do you need me to roll a grapple or, or... Uh no, don't worry about it. You okay. you're you're hanging on for dear life. You already did your action, so we'll just this is a cosmetic grapple. I believe <laughs> Balin is the only one that hasn't uh had a turn. This I have not turn. had a turn yet. You did have a turn because you like did your your aid thing Weep. and then broke away. This is a new character. Oh so I see what you mean. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So, you, so you, this character will get an action next turn. Death I makes it hard to track my action of the, the paralysis with lesser restoration. Oh, okay, nice. So that means it's the monster turn. That's better for me. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> oh, no. If you want to give me a second turn, I'll take <laughs> If I wanted to, you would. You would get it. And I would give it to you. But I don't want to. What <laughs> instead what this is going to do is it's going to continue to march down the road. Um, it is going to uh, da, 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 da. it is going to sling Luke or sorry not Luke chimney along um, a 12 does a 12 hit your armor class it rolled very low attacker wins dang wow okay <laughs> probably the worst um, we can roll yeah, yeah that's that was okay well <laughs> we I don't have a we, shield we or anything. He was doing okay. Uh, Thirty-four points of, of bludgeoning damage as it slings you off and smashes chimney into a chimney um, <laughs> of the general store. Chimney just splats onto that Aww. chimney. Yeah, there's Sweet chimney. Got uh, chimney. Away. chimney got flung into a chimney. Brother! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, and it's going to uh, start smashing into the building itself, like the general store. It doesn't look like it's trying to necessarily get to anybody inside. It's just causing some massive wreckage and, and chaos. It looks like it has knocked over two of the uh, the Cypher hotline lamps. Um, and there is a fire that is possibly going to break out on the front porch of the general store if not squelched soon um it's in the beginnings of a fire but that it is now the town's turn would you guys like the town to continue beating on this thing extinguish the fire or um do something else i'm standing on this porch so i'd rather not have it erupt in flames uh, okay. Na- yeah, nameless thug number two uh, has no—he doesn't know anything about fire, so that's not. I don't have the skills to put that out. Okay, so the villagers are all going to rush up to this and put the fire out, and then sort of disperse. Um, that's going to take care of that, and we are back in the top of the order. 
Like, you were any help fighting that fire, Jeremy. Look, Garf, it's not, it's not our thing, okay? Hey, hey, we, we, we have more important things to, to fight than each other. Are we taking orders from Balin now? Uh, not orders. Uh, he just kind of follows me around Go. now, I guess. But you okay. shall take orders from me. From who are you? Well, no. From <laughs> Balin. You know him, right? <laughs> None of you recognize me? Isn't, isn't this Toblor? Oh, Toblor, is that you? <laughs> the Toblor, first. yes, it is Toblor I, won. Toblor. The warrior chief, and I, we just lost two of my finest warriors, and now you all have to do. Uh, I, I'm not a warrior, sir. You are now! Well, Oblar, have you seen you who's to, on the top of this do, building? Then. No, I, I don't believe I have. I'm going to roll a perception check to see. <laughs> some, someone with some sort of effective weapon i think is on somewhere on top of this building i think i'm gonna try to get up there and take a look yeah is there i a got a 17. sorry eight uh 19. on perception yeah no wait no 17. 17 is right 17 I'm perception wrong. for what to see if i saw where that was coming from chat has purchased the shot the weather wash just so you know change the weather yeah we redeemed climate change Nice. The storm is starting to break. Yay. Just in time for fire to break out. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm sorry, Cleo. What is your character's name? Hoblor. 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 How, how are you checking the roof? Uh, I'm, I'm just rolling a perception by ro looking out the window. <laughs> to <laughs> see the roof. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll tell you this. Um, the first thing Toblor would know, as with being familiar with the general store, um, yes. having having geared up here multiple times, is that probably the fastest way up to the roof is through the very big, very wide chimney. Although <laughs> chimney part of chimney has broken off the top of the chimney, and the other part of chimney is now sitting at the bottom of the chimney. So you'd have to pull chimney out of the chimney to climb up the chimney and crawl past <laughs> the other part of chimney to get out of the chimney so that you could see what's going <laughs> up on the roof. That's entirely possible, and you could do that if you want to do that. Um, no, I'm just looking out the window. Okay, so if you look out the window, there's an on it. So you can't see on top of the roof yep. of the general store from there. So yeah, you, you pull uh -huh. over the window. Chimney. Yeah, and you see uh, sweep outside. Pour a little sweep on the ground, and you look up. And you're like, that's the roof. Well, we still have a roof attached, if that's what you were asking about. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm and at clearing that moment, out the Jimmy. tail swings by and smashes like the awning off of it. <laughs> and it, that roof is no longer attached there. We no longer <laughs> have a roof look, attached to the front. Look, we need to we need to figure this thing out and try and redirect it. Otherwise, it's going to smash Tobler's home. Maybe, maybe it's, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Follow me. <laughs> I'm going up on the roof. I keep telling you guys this, and and uh, I just runs crossbow. out the front I'll door. My heavy crossbow, um, and I'm going to try and what what other buildings are beyond this one? Like you know, I'm kind of I'm writing off the general store as a as a lost cause at this point. What other buildings <laughs> sure. are around uh, that it you know I could maybe take refuge in and get a high point on? Uh, further down the road. There is the inn on the same side as the general store, and then opposite it, which would be next to where the tavern is, um, are the stables. I'm going to go to the stables and see if there are any, like, um, like beasts that could be loose, like a stampede of something or whatever, you know, something like that to kind of redirect it or get it to leave. If you do go to the stables, you will cross the street where the monstrosity is and will invoke a, an attack of opportunity. Well, then I, I'm not going to do that. I don't actually care about this town <laughs> very much. Uh, I'm going to... I'll just go up to the roof of this building and see if I can jump across to the next one. So I'm going to like kind of heft my crossbow and follow Gurf up to the roof. Yep. So Same. Gurf and Tobler are both climbing up the chimney, which is yes. made of very Gurf thick brick. Uh, up the chimney they rose. Toblar is going out the front rose. door. Okay. Um, Toblar is going out the front door. Out the front door. Toblar is out the front door. Jeremy and Gurf are, are up the, the chimney. I um, love pushing going the up bits the chimney. of chimney out of the way. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so you, you get the bits of chimney out of the way. 
Um, and up on the roof, uh, you can go ahead and make that perception check, uh, Gurf, that you said you were wanting to do earlier to see what was going on with the uh, with that sound. I keep rolling poorly, but that's a six. You don't see anything up, up here, but you're pretty confident that with the rain now breaking and um, and like the weather starting to settle and clear a bit, uh, if you gave it another shot, you could probably you know get a better idea of what's going on. Okay. But from that, from so you can't necessarily see the the object that was was shooting at this thing. Um, what you can see is there is a fire that has started on the other side of the street um, mm-hmm. by the inn. That one has has started to take off. the 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 roofs up here are are close enough, like the alleyways are in between them. It's about a uh, five six foot jump, um, and there's enough of a descending incline that you get a nice little running start. You can easily hop from one roof to the next. Um, but you're you're currently on the general store. Further to the uh, to the east is your uh, uh, is the inn. Okay. Uh, the, it looks like the inn's about to go up in flames. Well, no, the, like this, the tavern is. The tavern, I'm sorry. Looks like this roof is coming down. I'm going to jump to um, the inn, the, the not burning down one. I'm going to mm-hmm. jump across to that and then fire my heavy crossbow at the the horror. Is that what you called it? Yes. Um, I'm going to fire my heavy crossbow at it. Would you say that from his position on this roof, Gurf is within five feet of the creature? Um, You're both jumping across, right? Uh, if if Gurf has enough movement to follow, yeah. But Gurf kind of spent his action already on the um, perception, so. Oh, yeah. So at this moment in time, no. Although, let me roll for something. Actually, you know what? One of you guys rolled me a D100. Ooh, well, yeah. I'm trying to figure out if I get I pack you. tactics on my. Yep, I know what you're doing. Okay. Um, sixty-three. Sixty-three. That's higher than fifty which means that there are villagers around its feet that are interrupting it enough to give you pack tactics. Perfect. I shall roll my attack with advantage then, which is good because I got a two. Oh, and then I got a seven. Nice. Plus my heavy crossbow has a plus two to hit, bringing me to a nine. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Nine, Um, not enough. Nine. Nine misses and mm. sails clear across and hits a villager. Does nine the villager yeah. falls nine. down dead. Ah, uh, whatever. I don't care about these people. <laughs> I'm a thug. Um, Toblar is after going out the front door yes. is going to immediately get to the closest leg that has just landed. As he's on, on his tail. way up there, an arrow like shoots in from the side, <laughs> and kills a villager, drops a villager, and makes a clear pathway to for you to get right to this leg. Oh, convenient! <laughs> and, uh, on this uh, villager, this villager uh, is an old woman who uh, looks like she was like like one of the more grizzled type. Like she was probably like the blacksmith's wife or something like that. Um, she had a big, hefty shield. That in, oh, I'm gonna just pick kind that up. There. Just yeah, Captain American style. I'll just mm-hmm. grab that as I go, and I'm going to attempt to climb its leg up to its midsection. Okay. Add plus two to your armor class while you're wielding that shield. Of course. Um, Make an athletics so, check. Athletics check. All right. Yep. Athletics for up, acrobatics for down. That's what Josh says. And acrobatics. Twenty. For Twenty. Not that. Non nat. All right, uh, you are on the back of this thing. Not in the center. You're on the back of its back because remember it's like long and it's right. an amalgamation of a praying mantis and a centipede worm. Um, for now, I guess I'm not going to stab it just yet. I feel like this is not vital enough, <laughs> and okay. I, I I need to get closer to a, a what I what I can determine is a vital point. Can I roll survival to determine what I think is a vital point? Sure. Uh, ooh, this is gonna be great. Three, <laughs> three. You found uh-huh. it. <laughs> oh, I'm already on it. Yeah, you you are right, on good. the most vital part of it. You're on the back of its butt. <laughs> and you can, and you think can... the head is a vital point. Oh, <laughs> but and I'll you know, show them. 
you know that worms' butts are just like their heads. And oh. so you figure, <laughs> hey, this is its other head. <laughs> I makes will sense. Uh, take my spear and thrust down for Luke and Chimney! <laughs> Make your I'm attack. Gonna kill with advantage. this butt head. Oh. Hear me out. <laughs> 13 is kind of like a 17, if you think about it. 13? Yeah. It's kind of like a 17. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Kind of like it. Not quite. This is not good. But it is kind of like it. No. Yeah, um, 13 to hit. You find a fold between two of the plates of carapace, and you wait for a moment where it like kind of kind of bends. And you're like, this is my moment. You stab it in between to find out that it's not a seam. It's just a place where it, the muscles are so strong that it bent and buckled the carapace up. And it has. Uh, you cut out. You muted. My little action muted my mic. <laughs> oh my god. Um, <laughs> that it has bent and buckled. Yeah, it, it has bent and buckled the carapace. And so it's not actually a gap in between. It's where the muscles have bent it. And so as you slam your spear in, it pinches and grabs onto your spear and your spear is stuck. I see how it is. You knew I was getting close to your vital point. <laughs> <laughs> that is right, true. I'll, I just use the spear then to steady myself as okay. to not fall off. And steady you are. Who's up next? Me. Uh, I will also... Are you the uh, longest living character so far? Yes. <laughs> well, ba Balin, Balin and uh, Gurf Gurf. Are, are the same. Amount. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Balin will also make his way to up the chimney. All right. You pop your head out the chimney. Roll the perception to find that that we'll see where that attack came from. Okay. That that Gurf is also trying to figure out. I just Wait, imagine you're like astounding seven. Seven. Yeah, we're really Oof. good at finding this thing. We are. <laughs> you feel like you feel like maybe uh, if you heard it attack again, that might be a good moment for whatever this thing is to reveal itself, and you could maybe maybe get a bit more of where it's and coming then from. Then, for my action, could I just just throw my spear at it? Yeah, yeah, you can. We're, we're, we're going to do that and, and pray. All right, when it's you, like, I'm, if you roll very, very low, you'll probably hit Cleo's character on the back. <laughs> um, a 10 plus not Toblar or for a total of 14, 14, not enough to hit Toblar because of the shield. <laughs> but Toblar, as the as the spear comes flying across, and lodges into your shield. You know, like you're holding onto the spear and your shield's kind of like behind you. You're kind of like yeehaw cowboying it. The the spear lodges into your shield. You have another spear. This is, this is fortuitous <laughs> as the gods have ordained to this. That's <laughs> right. Projectiles to keep barely missing Toblar. <laughs> <laughs> like crossbow bolt killed a villager to get his, clear his way. <laughs> that is my turn. I think that's the party. I think so. Yeah. All right. Doblar. I would like <laughs> you to make a stealth check. Ooh. Ooh. At first, it sounds Ooh. like it's a good thing, but then we realize that it means you've done so little effect to this creature that there's a possibility <laughs> it doesn't even know you're up there. <laughs> uh, I got uh, a 16. A 16. Ooh. You're up to 16 now. All right. You have been noticed. Um, no. One of the cuts nearby you on its back, uh, not on this particular fold of its carapace, the eyes turn up towards you and look, and it is going to try and reach back behind and attack you. It's going to do this at disadvantage because, you know, much like centipedes, their legs are like curly forwardy, but they don't really curly backwardsy. <laughs> That's how it works. That's mm. the uh, anatomical phrasing. Yeah. I'm in your blind spot, demon. It rolled a four, <laughs> so 15 to hit. Son of a... Remember, <laughs> you have a shield. Which is plus two, right? Yes. 
Uh, well, uh, let's do the math together now. 12 plus 2 is 16. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's, that's right, right. <laughs> you always no. were good at math. All right. So essentially what we're going to do uh, is since it's it, it can't really bend all the way back up there. Uh, what it's going to do is it's almost going to like flip its body completely like like up and backwards like like a centipede unrolling and it's just going to chomp at you with its mouth Ooh. Whoa! and that is going to be ooh it rolled mid damage 32 damage <laughs> do you have anything is is feet <laughs> <laughs> The two boots of Tobler, the legendary <laughs> dual spear and shield wielder, fall and roll off to either side and clatter to the ground. Um, it doesn't notice anybody else. You guys are up on the roof. Tobler, Tobler is mighty sacrifice. Um, well, there, there goes the commander, I guess. Yeah, there's the commander. He was just like, "You die, foul demon! You die here!" <laughs> I actually think the last thing we heard was, "You can't see me." <laughs> <laughs> you can't see me. <laughs> Your blind spot snapped. <laughs> you know what? You're right. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the lore. That's canon. That's lore accurate. <laughs> lore accurate. Um, with its other action, canon it's precise. actually going to stand up almost kind of straight. Like the back half of it is still flat on the ground, but its front half is like lifted up in the air, and it's it's looking off in the horizon, and you see its head swing back. It gets shot again. Can I see where that came from? You can make a perception check. Uh, 14. 14. You saw a glint of light reflecting off of somewhere very far away in the trees. But it appears you have some sort of ally who is performing quite a savage attack. Yep, I, was, I knew it was Savage. <laughs> uh, in the in, in the in the trees uh, over there. Some sort of some sort of sniper. I don't know what a sniper is, but uh, sure. Someone with a long ranged weapon helping us. I'm like us. winching my heavy crossbow. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm taking another shot at this thing. I'm gonna heft my heavy crossbow. I would like to. Um, try and find somewhere on this roof if possible uh half cover to crouch behind mm -hmm. and then sure. i'm gonna take another shot at it from you know i'll like poke my head out fire and then get back into my half cover um so that i'm firing with a, a clear shot um i suppose tobler has just died are there enough villagers for me to get pack tactics again or no um there are villagers currently clobbering it at its okay. feet um, so it's not necessarily pack tactics, but essentially it is like the equivalent of flanking. Ooh, I think I hit it this time. I got a 19 to hit. 19 hits. Let's Ooh, go. Nice. Yeah, take that beastie. For Toblar. Uh Where are you is, shooting it? Uh, I'm going to shoot it in like the biggest open eye that I can see. Okay. Okay, and that's probably going to be like through its front leg that was already split open with those two spears. And I rolled 10 piercing damage out of 10, 10. piercing damage nice. out of nice. 10. Um, as it almost splits the previous spear in half and goes through, it busts the joint and that front leg falls in half and it like falls forward on it. And out of 10 would pierce again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to just yell vaguely at it. You know, I'm just like grunting and angrily yelling. Uh, it turns its head towards you. <laughs> Gurf, shut up Gurf. immediately. Stay I say, 
Gurf is going to uh, see what what. Uh, oh my gosh, what's your character's name, Josh? Jeremy, you named me. What, oh, <laughs> what Jeremy each other for decades. <laughs> I know, uh, and I'm sorry. It's stressful. Um, he's going to see what Jeremy did and go. I'm following your lead, Jeremy, and uh, take aim with his heavy crossbow uh, at now the 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 creature that is now looking our direction, like. Carefully aim down the sides, look, you know, line up the shot perfectly, pull the trigger, and miss. <laughs> oh no! With advantage? <laughs> yeah. I, oh I, no! I, I, I rolled as Josh was rolling, and I was like, "I'm gonna gotcha. follow it up with an attack as well." And it's just like, oh. <laughs> so the roof of this inn that you're on top of is like an A-frame roof, and you're essentially on the back side of it, kind of like laying on your belly, propped mm -hmm. up on like the peak of it. It's been nice knowing and you. <laughs> It's been nice knowing Indeed. you and forgetting your name sometimes, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> the crossbow bolt flies wide. Um, who else has a, a turn? Uh, Garf! Uh, Jeremy! Yes? Wait, sorry, I got to change my voice. <clears throat> G Garf, Jeremy, what, what are you doing up here? I, I just got my chain shut on. And, Is that uh, Robinson? Uh, yes! I, Robinson! I'm like peeking out one of the like the little windows at the roof Robinson, of this Robinson, get inn. up here. We found a perfect hiding spot where we can attack it, but it can't hit us. We've got this cover <laughs> from the roof. Are you are you mad? I as soon as I saw that thing, I put on my arm. I'm making a run for it. Somebody's gotta tell somebody's gotta leave to tell somebody what happened no. here. We, gotta save this we, need, town. we need to stand and fight. This creature needs to meet the Robinson. <laughs> yeah, you. Oh, you can't. You can't tease me like that. No, I. I, I know what I'm doing. I'm. I'm living. This is why. This, you see what happened to Topla? Look, I know your father was famous for fleeing, and I know that you're Robin's son. But you need to stand up and break the cycle right now. <laughs> I'll, I'll break the cycle, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, crawl out the window. I don't trust being inside a building anymore, and I'm I'm just gonna hop down to the ground level, uh, and make a beeline for the stables. Okay. You take eight points of bludgeoning damage from the fall, as you hop off the roof to the ground. Uh, my leg! <laughs> <laughs> I knew I should have waited a couple more weeks before I had attempted a jump like that. How many hit points do you have left? Uh, I, you know, that's never a good question to hear. I'd say about like uh, only, I, four fifths. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. The bard seems to be the tanky one out of the options we have been given. <laughs> it's, the, it's the chain shirt. It's the chain. It's, shirt. It's a chain shirt. Okay. So you're down on the ground. You're in. Are you like circling down into the alleyway? I'm. I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to get to the the quickest way to the stables. Okay, the stables are across the street. Yes, I'm aware of what you okay. said last time. Okay, all right. So across the street you go. Um, it, I am going make a stealth check. See if it takes its attack of opportunity at you or the townsfolk that are around its feet. Um, uh, this is my candle vigil for the town. That is uh, fourteen. <laughs> fourteen. It does not notice you. As you weave through, like, and like, pause and stop, and you, you trip, oh, like, you have the timing right. The, the, the spiked Ooh. feet are like digging two feet into Ooh. the ground, and you're like, I'm okay, ready to go. And you trip over a shoe that's <laughs> on the ground, and it's smashed, like, the, the, the foot smashes in front of you, and you realize this shoe just saved your life. You had the timing all wrong, and as it pulls back up, you're able to wiggle your way underneath it. And out the other side, you are now in the front of the stables. Um, the way the stables look, it does have like a storefront because this is almost like a uh, like a tack shop. Uh, you could buy saddles here. You can do some ropes. There's some lassos tied up here, um, like already pre knotted and everything, and like pre waxed and whatnot. There is uh, like a couple barrels of nails and horseshoes and and things of that nature. And then to the side of it. Is the uh, is the opening where the actual stables and the and the horses and the oxen and whatnot are actually kept? Um, okay. So you got some um, you know, some options. I'm going for. Uh, is there any horses that look like they were already pre prepared? 
Got their saddle already buckled on. Roll a d6. Three. Three. There is one. I'm just going to go for that one. Okay. There are two oxen that are harnessed up, too. Nah, they're too slow. Okay. <laughs> Robinson's right. going to make it out of this one. <laughs> just like my dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that exhausts the, uh, yes. the return. Yeah. Was there anybody yeah, yeah. else? Yes. Um, I'm going to cast resistance on uh, Gurf again. Gurf, you have been resisted. Thank you. I I, I believe in you. Okay, I think I, we can make it out of this. Keep it I up. I hope so. And, uh, um, what is it, Balin? Baylor? Balin. Balin. That's you. Balin. Yeah. Uh, we'll, uh, climb down from the chimney as this creature looks at us and, like, just kind of, like, lay on the floor, like, just ready for this thing to destroy this building and hope that he somehow makes it out. Okay. Which building are you in? Are you in the inn or are you, are you in the, uh, like, the general store. Yeah, the general, general store. Okay. Store. Been in the general store. Okay. Because all right. The general store. Was there anybody else this round? Nope. That's it. All right. The creature, the skittering horror, smashes into the general store. Dun, 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 dun. It collapses around you, Balin. But you had the forethought to not only duck down, but you're in the center of the building, right on the uh, right on the outside of the stone chimney. And as the wood structure collapses around you, um, there is like the chimney does not get knocked over and you are inside. Uh, there's not much option moving forward to, uh, you could try to, to break through the debris if you wanted to like climb up out of it, but you're miraculously, I rolled a natural 20, you're miraculously unscathed by this. What about my uh, companions that were on the roof? They were, we're on, on the, the uh, Yeah, we, were, we, we crossed roofs, yeah. Okay. This is actually a relief, I say to Gurf. I, I thought it was gonna, when it looked over at me, I thought it was gonna try and destroy this building. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I thought we were goners. Yeah. We really lucked out here. Yeah, There's it's totally not go gonna spend, spend more of its turn turning around and looking at us again and what going does after mean, us. Spend more of its turn. You know, like how it's, you know, how like when these things happen, it kind of like we take a turn shooting at it, it takes a turn trying to kill us. Like it's I a metaphor. This is chaotic. As one of its legs <laughs> swings across the top <laughs> and like scrapes and scratches across the, uh, the, the peak of the roof. It's like you Both can see the leg. tiles buckling. 13 to hit which one of us? Both? Both of you. Uh, yeah, that hits. But you're behind yeah. cover, so you're gonna get, uh, what is it? Full cover is plus four AC. Is that correct? Are, Are we, we in full, full cover or half, or half cover? cover? I only said half cover before. Well, you're behind it, right? Yeah, we're behind the roof. You're, so you're fully covered. Okay, so that's plus five to AC uh, and deck saves. So then, then it doesn't that was hit. A Thirteen. We're safe. All right. So as you guys are talking about this, you see this big spiked claw just go and like scrape the top of the, the peak of this roof off over your head. Splinters and clay tile pieces are like hitting all over your hair and your face and everything. Um, and I needed a haircut. This isn't how I imagined getting it, but high and tight. I, oh. And you hear some crunching sounds of some of the villagers. You also notice now that the roof that you're hiding behind is a little lower, your eyes are kind of, you know, they're a little, they can kind of see. Um, the inn is currently on fire, which is where the women and children were sheltered underneath in the basement. Oh. Do you care enough about this town to try and save the women and children? I I mean, uh, as I, the logic that I used before still stands. Um, I don't discriminate as to who I lie and cheat to get money from, and women and children are people. Uh, children are just people that I could lie and cheat uh, 
later on in life. So right. yeah, yes, they don't have we any need money to save right them. now. So it's not they like, will. So it's like a long term no. investment. Yes, it saying. is a long term investment. We need to save them. <laughs> I don't. I don't know, man. Like, I'm just not sure the stock market's really for me. Like, I, yeah, come on. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Garf is going to, like, try to grab uh, uh, Jeremy's arm and bring him along to go get to the get to the inn. Okay. Yeah. Jeremy will follow. All right. Make a stealth check as you, like, are, are you going down the chimney into the, into the inn? Are you going through one of the windows? Are you jumping off the side? Because you're going to take some fall damage How if you do on that. How fire is the tavern? The tavern is very on fire. So, like, the roof would be really dangerous to jump onto. Well, it's also on the other side of the street. Is there, like, a cellar or anything that, like, I'm thinking about how we can get the people out of it. Um, like, yeah, there's, 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 there's like, like the... a root cellar access in the back. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, kind of stand up, like, half crouch with, with Gurf, like, we're getting ready to be like, we gotta get him out through the cellar, like, the back cellar door, you know, the little, the, the hingy door. Uh, All right. Okay. Uh, how do we get down without dying, do you think? Uh, uh, t- down the chimney we go <laughs> and do another okay. chimney maneuver. All right. I will jump in the chimney right after you, like, some uh, kind you, of you, you, disgusting you, Santa Claus. <laughs> so you, well, you know, Featherbrook... Stuff. Featherbrook is known for its very wide chimney openings and mm. and thick brick construction that are easy handholds. Thick so, brick uh, is going to be the name that I name whatever the next character is. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I got a four on stealth, just so you know. So, okay, um, so it's definitely aware of your presence. Uh, you can choose to go across the street. If you do, you will invoke an attack of opportunity. I got a 17 on stealth. Okay. you it, it It's looking at Jake's character and not yours. <laughs> it's looking at Gurf. <laughs> like, Gurf, yeah. keep it looking at you. And I'm going to try and like sneakily sprint across the street. And I'll just take the dash action to get back to where the cellar door is. Unless I can sure, make it sure. with my normal action. Um, and I don't know if you'll allow this or not. I would love to just throw it open. Like, I, you know, I don't know if that's a full action or if I can maybe bonus action do that. Just like throw open the door and kind of, you know, like this way, get out, get out. You'll have enough movement to get in place. You won't have the action to actually to okay. pull it open. It, it looks like there is some uh, some debris from the burning roof that has fallen on top of it. You'll have to push it off okay, and, and get it open. In that case, I'm going to dash close enough that I can contribute, like do those things the next turn. But yes. I'm going to choose a spot where I can like get some cover, whether it's half cover or full cover from the, the monster. If um, you get back around to the actual opening, it's on the back of the building, which is on okay, the opposite cool. side of the street that you're at. So you, you'll yep. be completely out of, out then of I'll sight just get of it. Close enough to help, but far enough I don't take any fire damage. Gurf is going to dash in a direction that's the opposite way from the end. So that way he's like drawing it away from, drawing oh, the yeah. tension wow, away what from selfless what's thing going for on. Gurf to do. Gurf is, is like really having a redemption arc this evening. He is. He is. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Balin would like to is like <laughs> terrified now, like even more so, and is going to follow Robinson's suit and run to the stables to try and get out of here. All right, so, so I'm going to need you to make. Yeah, I'm going to need yep. you to make either a late. It's going to be a athletics check to see if you can muscle your way through this. Um, through this debris and find a way out. You're essentially uh, lifting good. beams and pushing yeah. stuff. Uh, that is going to be a non-natural 20. A non-natural 20. Amazing. Describe the scene as you bust out the front of this fallen general store. So, uh, Balin, you see huddled in this, this chimney place, uh, debris around him he's like sobbing and just terrified out of his life and then you see that sort of like transformation of like hope and like bravery and courage to like finally come out and then he bursts through the debris and then sprints straight to the stables (laughs) all right coward again (laughs) all right make a stealth check yep You can make it with advantage because this monster is already being uh, distracted by dearth. Uh, My name's Gurf. 
G E R P H. Nerf. 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 That is a 10. A 10. It notices you. Um, some of the eyes on the back of it um, are tracking you, but it doesn't look like it wants to attack you. It looks like it is focused on Smurf. Okay. So do I get to the stables then? Yes. You can get to the stables. But no action this turn because yeah, you yeah. used it to get out of the, the building. All right. Robinson, it's time for the Robinson special. Robinson <laughs> special. Here it comes. I'm ready for it. Do you have another horse, Robinson? Not now! <laughs> and you don't want to be on this one! I'm sorry, Dad! But I can't let the women and children go out like that! And I... Yeah! And I charge the horse just to get within 10 feet of this monstrosity. And I blow on my horn and create a concophony. Um... And as I do that, I will also use my bonus action to taunt him with a wink. Okay. <laughs> so the taunt um, must succeed a DC 12. He must succeed a DC 12 uh, charisma saving throw. He rolled a two. You will now have disadvantage on ability checks, attack rolls, and saving throws until Let's the start go. of my turn. Ooh. Very nice. And now I cast Concophony as my action. Each creature within a 15-foot cube originating from me must take a DC 12 constitution saving throw. Okay. Ooh. I rolled a three. On a failed save, creature takes nine, sorry, not nine, 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed up to 10 feet away, though I don't know how large this thing is and I'm not sure if that counts because it doesn't mention the size of the creature. If it doesn't say the size, it doesn't matter. Then in that case, it takes 11 damage and gets Ooh, pushed 10 snap. feet back. Woo! Gurf, I say your name properly. Yes. Because as you're running away from this thing, this massive thunderous horn blast boom, radiates through the street. And this creature that is like lumbering towards you just gets shoved closer to you by 10 feet. So like, it, its front legs, one of them being snapped in half, collapse underneath it almost like it's on its knees or like it's on its elbows. And it scrapes along the, the muddy dirt and street breaking up cobblestones as it comes right up into your face. That's too fast. That's too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I will now uh, use the rest of my movement on this horse. I don't know what my speed on a horse is yet, but I will uh, create some distance between me and this thing. So movement has been like area to adjacent area with the horse. We'll let you go double. So okay. it's like a free a free dash action. I'm I'm going down the main street yes. away from it. Well, it are you heading towards the gate or are you heading in the direction that it's been heading? I guess in the direction it's been heading. I don't okay, know what direction I was standing. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Whatever direction I was in it, I'm getting away from it. And I believe I was the so stables like were in front of it. You turn and fled. Yes. I turn and flee Robinson. from it. That is after Robinson. causing a cacophony and taunting my enemy. Very, very good, very good. I believe that's everyone this turn. I think yep. so. Which yep. means, Durf, Gurf, Smurf, Burf. Mm -hmm. um, it is right up in your face. It's going to do a biting attack at you at disadvantage because it currently just got pushed in its other head, and also because it gets taunted. Oh, yeah, the taunts uh, disadvantage on attacks and ability checks and saves mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. On all okay. the things. All three. Well, that is a 14 to hit. Oh, that Girl. still hits. Dang. Oh. All right. It is going to bite Gurf. 
Eh. 35 points of piercing damage. Oh, Ouch. Gurf's last words are, there's still more people to rob! And then he's <laughs> eaten. And as he gets chomped by this thing, uh, what small bits of treasure fly from, like, are flung forth from him? Oh, uh, well, something that's actually little known about Gurf, he actually uh, kept this hobby a secret. He was a collector of old world currency. He still oh. believed in the gold, silver, bronze, platinum. The gold standard. Yeah, the gold standard, as yeah. it were. <laughs> um, so he always kept a pouch of gold on his person, even after it wasn't relevant anymore. So that the, the glittering gold, uh, you know, flies out from the, the creature's mouth. And we focus in on one of these coins as it tink, tink, tink rolls along the cobblestones and bends and, and winds its way. We see a boot step down onto the coin. And the camera pans up to reveal. To reveal. Just a random normal looking guy. <laughs> just a <laughs> villager. Just, just a man. Uh, and he is, what is he holding? He's holding a makeshift club, a makeshift club. It's actually just one of the legs of one of the bar, bar stools mm -hmm. from inside the tavern. And he just like taps it on his hand and he looks up at the creature and he says, not in my village. And he <laughs> is about thing. ready to. It's, it's, it's a classic phrase of thick brick. If yeah. I do say so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thick brick. Uh, as he's known around town. Uh, is ready for a club attack whenever it's his turn, but it may not be yet. Not quite yet. Uh, the villagers are going to hammer on this thing. Uh, a bunch of them are just getting, I mean, like you guys, they're getting slung across the street, um, but they do seem to be wearing it down a bit. The The creature is now bleeding this, this nasty, gelatinous, goopy blood as it pours and pools up on, on the ground. Um, it it's almost like acidic and it like burns into the ground, but then it like, then it like freezes and then it like liquefies. It, it's, it's like shifting and shimmering almost like oil. It's this weird, weird looking stuff. Mm. Um, and da, 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 as this, as this creature has, has like scraped through the ground, um, toward Gurf. Um, it was like snapping over and bending some of these uh, hotline light poles. Um, and as it breaks through a couple of these, you see like the, the fizzling residual energy uh, of the ciphers and, and, and the hotlines. And a, another shot fires off and it ignites some of this energy and blows up in this big, huge explosion. Um, Brick, you cast a magnificent shadow against the, uh, the, the building that you're in front of as this thing just blows up in front of you. It sweeps your hair back. Your hair like slowly waves in the wind. Um, and your club table leg looks like six feet long. That's the movie <laughs> um, poster for this, this D and D episode is just like Brick's shadow against a... Uh, a tall yeah. building, like a brick wall, you know, with the makeshift yep. club in the one hand. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thick brick of Featherbrook. That's thick. what this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <thick laughs> brick the one with the brick from Featherbrook. Um, but there's the, the the explosion has like blown pieces of the carapace off of this thing, and uh, there's just this mass of like these eyes and these undulating, like weird membranes and tendons and and stuff underneath it. Um, and some of the eyes are, are burned and blown off and they start to like leak out this weird oily rainbowish like goop stuff. Um, but it's looking it's looking pretty messed up, but it's looking pretty nasty. It almost sounds disgusting. <laughs> re it almost steals its focus to continue heading down the river, almost like at the end of this river, there is something that it wants. Hmm. But it is now the our hero's turn. So Balin, seeing his, his good friend Gurf go down, has another resurgence. This time, 
to fight, seeing also that Robinson, the the coward, stand up and turn around. He he feels like he cannot run away from this fight. <laughs> Bye. <And> so <laughs> he turns around. He casts aid on himself and uh, a thick brick. And what is Josh's character's name again? I am not in view of you. I'm like behind. Yeah, he's the building, behind a building uh, somewhere, the corner across the street, something. Is Cleo's character in view? I'm Jeremy. Yes, Cleo's character would be in view. And Cleo's character all get aid. He runs towards this creature, pulls the shield off his back, and scoops up a spear off the ground, going in for an attack. Do it. Come on, Balin. Balin! The he's not, he's not on Balin! Us. He's not Balin oh, on us. That's right. Yeah. Uh, 13 he's Stalin. <laughs> plus... Four is seventeen. He is seventeen is its armor answer. class. Go ahead and roll your damage. I mean, he, hey, even if he doesn't isn't very effective, right? At least he's stalling for us. Mm, uh-uh. <laughs> That's that is he's rushing this a creature. Whopping five piercing damage. Five piercing damage. Um, as Balin runs up to it from behind and pierces it with the uh, with the spear, it bursts some of these eyes and the goop flies out in this weird weird angle parts of it like Order. almost shock with electricity and another one of them like turns into this mist and like dissipates it's really odd mm. 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 brick wants to match some eyes with his makeshift club well it's right there brick it's right in front of you uh and technically brick- <laughs> it's flanked because balin is way on the other end oh, of it's it. flanked okay great uh <laughs> all right that's a 17 yeah, 17 hits. All right. Thick uh, brick coming in hot. Thick brick uh, for one bludgeoning damage. <laughs> 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 maybe, like, maybe it snaps his table leg a little bit shorter, you know? Yeah. Like a Hitting of like a brick. Thick brick. In this On moment. brick wall. <laughs> in this moment, as this thing has been bludgeoned, Pierced, no way does thick brick get <laughs> burned <laughs> and exploded and shot at. The, the 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 main eyes glare at you with this oddly intelligent, like horror and ferocity. Tell me how thick brick <laughs> removes the final hit point from this <laughs> skittering horror. Woo. Thick brick. Thick, thick brick. brick. Let's thick go. brick winds up like essentially a golf style swing. Yes. Like just like like he, like it's like he's teeing off a driver. Yes. And he and as he winds up, once again he just says, I said, not in my town. And he swipes <laughs> and it is out of the park. <laughs> what a hero. Smacks one that, eyeball. <laughs> and with that the clouds part and the sun begins to break this Jeremy horror is night, horrible night is over driftwood off yes. of the cellar trying to get the, the women and children out Jeremy is straight up pulling the Captain America while people are fighting and doing all of the big dangers he's, he's getting people on the bus he's, he's pulling them up out of the cellar the whole time he's just going do it for girth do it for girth Robinson girth turns around and people. do it for girth realizes maybe he actually helped and he doesn't have to run away <laughs> and he sees the women and children gather and he's like this is what the stable this is what the oxen are for and he starts hitching up a cart yeah Girth and helps. Balin yes what are you doing in this final oh. moment as this thing breathes its last uh, Balin is probably going around looking for any like people still like on the brink of of life and death and casting spare the dying just on as many people as he can you get spare the dying and you get spare the dying good thing these ciphers are multi-use it's a good thing they're (laughs) scattered all over the ground from the other dead medics (laughs) Balin has got some big Zoth energy maybe maybe there's maybe there's a little bit of vibes left in the town of Featherbrook Maybe there's, maybe people haven't completely forgotten the gods. But in this moment, as the inn burns to the ground, 
and the women and children have been brought to safety and thick brick stands one foot with his knee bent up in front of him triumphantly with his foot on the head of this monstrosity and he gazes off into the distance tonight's game of dungeons and dragons comes to a close Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out and letting me DM tonight. That was so fun. And uh, that was great, Josh. Yeah. What do we What do we tell the fine folks at home after we finish a game of such epic proportions as this? Oh man, we think it's really important for you folks at home to know all about jury nullification. So the way that this works is when you get a summon for jury duty, sometimes you don't necessarily trust the jurors, right? And so you need a way as the people to kind of like fight back against the machine or the institution. We tell them GGs and GN. <laughs> oh, it's still me who has to end the stream. Well, you and me, the end of the video. Kinda awkward. Kinda waiting for you to subscribe and you know all that. And you know I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just gonna head out. <laughs>